Hello guys, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have an awesome lore video for you guys. I'm sorry it's been some time since I've made a lore video. I've just been busy with so many projects, but I'm trying my best to have, you know, one really good lore video out for you guys at least once a month. But anyways, about this video is on this video, we're going to be doing a lore video, but we're also going to be doing a top 10 at the same time. I would also like to thank today's sponsor, which is War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play war game where you can control tanks, planes, and ships. Check out my link down below in the description. And this video, I want to cover the top 10 most evil and cruel things that Dmitry Raskolov has done. So Dmitry Raskolov, as you guys know, is my favorite antagonist in the GTA series. I don't think there's a better antagonist than him. My second favorite one is Tenpenny. My favorite antagonist of all time is Dmitry because it's how manipulative he is and just how cruel he is and how he just basically comes out of nowhere. He seems like this reasonable guy, but in reality, he's basically GTA's version of the devil. I don't think that there's a more evil antagonist than him. So you guys might remember that about two years ago, I made a video in which I talked about why Dimitri um, betrays Nico, the reasons for it, and I cover his personality and character analysis in depth. If you want to watch that video, on that video I just covered Dimitri's personality, the type of person that he is. I'll also link that video at the end, but on this video we're going to be covering in order, in my opinion, the top 10 worst and evil things that he's done, because if you're not familiar with this guy, you will agree that this guy is the GTA version of the devil, because it's just a horrible, cruel, evil evil things this guy has. He has no empathy, no conscience whatsoever. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Top 10 most evil and cruel things Dmitry Raskolov has done. Starting off at number 10, we have turning his best friend Mikhail Faustin into a violent, abusive psycho. I have to tell you, keep an eye on the fucking girl. You superstitious old crone, I'll see you in hell! You Someday I'll crucify you! Nico Bellic. Yes. Good name. Good name. Where's Dimitri? <laughs> So in the short time that we see Faustin, we actually think that he's the unreasonable one, that he's the extremely violent one, and we see this just with just how he abuses his wife. Привет, Лена. Привет, Ма. What is that? Uh... I tell you one thing and you ignore me! Uh... You stupid uh... bitch! Uh... <laughs> Nico Bellic, baby. He also has some deep psychological issues, and on top of that, he kills Andre simply for saying that Nico was Roman's cousin. Good lord. What are you doing? Nothing. I mean, I was finding out who he is. And? Who is he? He is his cousin. You were about to cut up some guy in my house, making all that noise to find out he's his cousin. Where did you find this idiot? He was a friend of your sergeant when we were in Vladivostok. He's an imbecile. So, Nico Bellic, you think it's okay to kill my employees? If he is an asshole, yes. Do it! Oh. I agree. Mikhail! <laughs> asshole, look at me like I'm a piece of shit. Bozo <laughs> moi. Now listen, Nico Bellic. You are very lucky Vlad was an idiot. The only reason I keep him around is because I fucked his sister. Look at me. You owe me. I got some digheads in my neighborhood trying to run a shipment, yeah? And we found a buyer for the TVs. Yes, a buyer. But you got to get them for us so we can make the sale. Can you untie Roman? Хорошо. Help! Shut up, Roman. Shut up! Roman, shut up! Shut up, Roman! Shut up! Roman, 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 shut up! Stop shooting people, you maniac! My wife doesn't like when people shout! Whatever! You better get those screens soon! Or I will personally pull your cousin's stitches out, one by one, and watch his guts spill onto the floor! Clean this shit up! Listen, we'll take care of your cousin, but you better get the police car, and then you call me! Roman! Roman! Go! 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 I, I'll take care of him! Fuck! But here's the question. 
why is Faustin like this? We know that Faustin was always a criminal, you know, he was always a bad guy, but at one point, he actually was not this violent and abusive. Sure, he might have committed crimes, but he at least didn't have this insane temper and he didn't abuse his wife. His wife even confirms that in the past, something changed. Sit down. Thank you. You want some tea? Sure. Mikhail doesn't let me use this anymore. Says it makes us look like barbarians. Uncivilized. Like immigrants. Oh, yeah? I know what you're thinking. It is a bit funny coming from him. <laughs> he did not used to be like this. When we were young, at home, he was beautiful. He was happy. He made me happy. But um, then something changed years ago. I never quite knew what it was. So many years I wondered what it was or what was wrong with me. That I did not see it in him. Or I changed him. Now, when I played GTA 4 many years ago, I didn't notice this, not until, you know, a couple years ago, when I actually started working on my Dimitri Lore video, and I paid attention to that cutscene really carefully, and that's in there for a specific reason. What changed? What was it? She didn't understand why he just randomly became like this all of a sudden. Why? It's because of Dimitri. It's because he hung out with Dimitri so long, and Dimitri's horrible influence had turned Faust into this sadistic, you know, violent, abusive drug addict. It was Dimitri who did all of this. And the thing is, though, is I have even more proof. In the mission, do you have protection? When you're actually driving with Dimitri, Dimitri himself says that things didn't always used to be like this. Mikhail was a fair man. You know how much money there is in selling this stuff online? A whole fucking heap. We're going to ignore what Mikhail said and try not to kill them. Taking a bite of this pie would be very profitable for our operation. I got no problem with sparing some lives. No, it's Mikhail that has that issue. Can't keep his finger off of the triggers. Wasn't always like this, though. Things got to him. I hope it don't get to me. So, you and Mr. Faust. Have you always argued and made up like this? It wasn't always like this. Mikhail was a great man. He had a temper, but he was fair. Now he blows his top at the slightest thing. I never know who he will shoot, who he will stab. Andre, who you met in Mikhail's basement. He was always loyal. He was a good worker. Now he's dead. I guess that, that is why we need your help. Remind Faustin of that. Maybe then he will not try to kill me. Dimitri knows very much why Faustin became this horrible human being. This was just further manipulation by Dimitri to convince Nico that Faustin was the unreasonable one and the violent one, when in reality, Dimitri was actually much worse than him. Next at number 9, we have blackmailing Bernie Crane. So later in the story, Nico meets his childhood friend Florian Kravitz, mistaking him as the man who betrayed him years ago. Florian has changed his name to Bernie Crane as an, and is in a relationship with Bryce Dawkins. Bryce Dawkins is a deputy mayor of Liberty City who has cam campaigned heavily against homosexuality, but he is being blackmailed by someone. Come on, Bryce. Come on. You've got to be kidding me. But, but, but I'll be thrown in jail. I'm not legal. <clears throat> um, uh, my friend just turned up. I think he can help. I love you. Screw your wife, honey! This is for real! Jesus H, Nico. I need a tranquilizer. Something strong. Oh, man, I am cold. <laughs> Enjoying your new life in the land of opportunity, Dan? This is no time for jokes, buddy. Ah, uh -uh. no sorry. I'm in real trouble, Nico. Real trouble. Bryce is getting blackmailed. About what? About me! Okay. That's not good. Did he find out any information about Darko Brevich yet? No. But he's working on it. You've got to help me. Got to? Huh. How? We're going to warn these bastards off. Come on! Ah... Uh. Nico decides to help Bernie and meets the blackmailer, and surprise, surprise, look who it is.
for his price. We wanted to speak to him, not his rent boys. Listen, you're going to speak to your boss and tell him to back off. <laughs> if that's the way you want to play it, fine. Price will be all over Viso News tomorrow morning. You know what? Maybe the best way to get a message to your boss is for me to send him your heart. Yeah, tough guy. How do you like that? Dmitry Raskolov only asks once. Your lover's career is over. <laughs> Fucking Dmitry. Now, while you definitely can make the argument that Bryce Dawkins is a scumbag, Bernie doesn't deserve this, and this is what a lot of people don't think about, is that this blackmail is going to ruin his life as well. Nico is right when he says that Dimitri is too greedy to go to the media himself. So we were just meant to scare them? Well, that didn't work out so good, did it? At least they can't tell Dimitri about the meeting or go to the papers. Dimitri is too much of a rat to go to the media himself. The information he has on Bryce is too valuable. You think? It would kill Bryce if he didn't have his career. Maybe he should have thought about that when he started dating you. Not that there's anything wrong with dating you. Your choice is your choice, man. But he should have thought about who he was before getting elected on the family values ticket. He preaches homosexuality as evil. It's insanity. He's a hypocrite, and it was only a matter of time before someone like Dimitri tried to capitalize. Shit. I'll shut up now. You don't need me telling you about your life. I don't normally talk this much. I'm your friend, and I will try to help. Dimitri later calls Nico and threatens him. Nico Bellic. What do you want, Dimitri? I always thought that there was something not quite right about you, Nico. Now Man, that I, I hear you are friends with Bright Dawkins and Bernie Crane, I know what it is. Stop blackmailing my friends, Dimitri. You do not want to anger me more. Persuade them to give up the contracts. We can work together. I will cut you in, Nico. Let's be friends. I made the mistake of working with you before. It's not one I'll repeat. Goodbye. So the reason that Dimitri is doing all of this is to get the city contracts from Dawkins. But it doesn't end there. Bernie takes Nico on a boat ride to have some fun, but they are ambushed by Dimitri's men, who Nico kills. Oh, cute. Rojni Rossi! Let me see. They don't look like they're on the pleasure cruise. That's not good. Man, I just, I just, I just can't stand Dimitri so much. I hate that guy so much why I shoot his men a bunch of times, too. This video is brought to you by War Thunder, which is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. The game is free to play, available on the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC. The game has over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. You can choose vehicles from the US, Japan, Germany, France, China, Israel, Italy, the Soviet Union, Great Britain, and Sweden. And these vehicles range from tanks from the 1920s all the way to modern tanks, jets, and ships. Immerse yourself with highly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, an authentic vehicle, and weapon sounds. Additionally, the game has awesome x-ray visuals. Every single vehicle from the ships to the tanks to the planes and helicopters has realistic internals that show their engines, fuel supply, ammunition, gears, tracks, and crew positions. And this is my favorite thing about the combat in this game. When you hit an enemy tank or ship, every single time it will show you just how much damage you did. Just take a look at some of my kills here. This other guy, I fired underneath the front armor, and I got the shot in that the shell killed the entire crew inside. You can use this to your advantage to kill certain crew members or disable vehicles. And when you get killed, it shows you a kill cam of the shell hitting your tank. And if you don't want to play against players, you can always play against bots in several historical battles. I like how they have the Korean War and also the interwar period before World War II, with the Spanish Civil War and the Soviet and Japanese border war in Mongolia. There are different modes, arcade for new players, 
who want simplified controls, realistic mode, which is more of a challenge, and simulation, which is very realistic and the ultimate challenge. War Thunder has awesome customization ranging from camos, historical markings, and decorations. And if you play on PC, do not worry about needing a flight stick or a specific controller, as mouse and keyboard work great with this game. The game has also been heavily optimized to run on most lower-end computers. Recently, also, War Thunder added a new expansion called Alpha Strike, with a new ground map based on Northern Holland with new tanks and jets. Give War Thunder a try. It's free on the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PS4, PS5, and PC. And if you actually are a new player or you haven't played in six months, if you use my link down below in the description in the top pinned comment, you will get 100,000 Silver Lions, an M2A4 light tank, a Galler's F3 F2 aircraft, a, a 58 FT PT3 uh, torpedo boat, 50% XP booster, 7 days of a premium account, an M4 tank for rent, a P440E one plane for rent, an Eagle of Valor decoration, and 10 backups for each rented ground vehicle. Check out War Thunder today. It's a great and awesome free-to-play game. At number 8, we have Not Stopping Nico from Killing Lenny Petrovich. Lenny Petrovich is the son of Kenny Petrovich, the most powerful Russian mob boss in Liberty City. In the mission Final Destination, Dmitri tells Faustin about the police heat all over them, and Faustin suspects Lenny. Girls, can you give us a minute, huh? Please. Okay. Get out of here. Keep it warm. I won't be too long. So, what is it? We've got police trouble. The feds or someone are all over us. Sergei told me that a friend of his in the courts told him they've been authorized to tap our phones and they know about the pot we stole. Shit. Who is the rat? It's no one. It's just the way we've been behaving. Making too much noise. This was inevitable. We're going to have to calm things right down for a while. It's that fucking guy, yeah. I know it is. I saw it in his eyes. You know? That guy. That guy who bought the coke, but he didn't buy the That's pot. Lenny! He's my cousin's boyfriend, it's not him. Yes, he's a moron, yes, but he's okay. I don't trust him. What? I just told you! He knows too much. Oh. You, get him. Are you sure? Sure? No, I'm not. Right now I'm wondering if it's him or you. It could be you. Think for a second. This has been going on for months. Think! Look where your thinking has got us. You were in charge of security. Good job. Well done, Dimitri. You pathetic idiot. You! Prove you're loyal. Go and kill the guy. Don't question my loyalty. Then don't question my orders! He lives on Guantanamo Avenue in Bohan. Head up there and call me. Me personally, when you get there. Mikhail? Please, don't do this. Shut up. I, shut the fuck up. I'm begging I you. Said, shut the fuck please up. Please, don't Go. do this. Why don't you You listen? want to play games? This hey, is not break. a game. You stop. have to play I by the stop. rules. Now, Dimitri tries to seemingly act reasonable here and tells him, please don't do this. But the reality is he wants Lenny dead. The reason he wants Lenny dead is this is the perfect excuse for him to use later on to get rid of Faustin. And Nico sees this exchange and it, it makes him makes him believe that Dimitri is the reasonable one. But notice what Dimitri said in that conversation. He did not once say, don't kill Lenny, he's the son of the most powerful Russian mob boss. You think a detail like that would be the most important thing to say. Instead, he says, he's my cousin's boyfriend. Do you know how ridiculous that sounds? There's even further proof that Dimitri wanted to kill Lenny. After the mission, Dimitri tells Nico, do you have any idea what you have done? Hey Lenny, Mikhail Faustin don't like you no more. It's nothing personal. Faustin ain't nobody. Fuck off! It's enough of a somebody to get you killed. Do what my brother is. What you have done. I have followed Mr. Faustin's orders. Not much more. The boy you killed was the son of Kenny Petrovich. This is a very dangerous man. You will not take kindly to this. How was I to know? You weren't. This is Mikhail's craziness. I will speak to people and see what I can do. 
Nico says, how was I to know? And Dimitri says, you weren't. However, during that same mission, there is actually a secret phone call where you can call Dimitri before getting to the station. Nico hesitates and wonders if he should kill Lenny and asks Dimitri if he should. And what does Dimitri say? Dimitri, should I do this? Should I kill this boy for Mr. Faustin? Just one second, Mikhail. It's nobody. I cannot talk just now. Do what you have to do. Dimitri says, do what you have to do. This would have been a perfect opportunity to say a simple no, but he didn't stop Nico because this was part of his ultimate plan. We never find out whether Lenny wasn't actually, um, actually a government informant. It's very much that he, so that he could have been because Thousand was a rival mafia to his father's mafia, but... Regardless, this was part of Dimitri's ultimate plan, was to have Lenny killed, just so that he could blame Faustin for that, and then take over. Moving on to number 7, we have trying to kill Nico and Roman early. What do I mean by this? Dimitri tries to have Nico and Roman killed several times throughout the story, but did you know that he actually tried to have both Nico and Roman killed, even before meeting them? Yup, the moment that Nico was knocked out, Dimitri wanted him and Roman dead. It was only because of intervention from Faustin that Nico and Roman were spared. I have proof of this. When Nico goes to kill and confront Faustin, Faustin calmly tells him that you would be dead if it was not for me. That's what Dimitri wanted. You would be dead if it wasn't for me. That is what Dimitri wanted when you killed Vlad. Faustin also later says, too kind, that's what I was, too kind. Too kind! That's what I was! Too kind! I led the snakes into the nest, and they destroyed everything! But Dimitri also has his own version. In the mission Do You Need Protection, there is an alternate dialogue with Dimitri if you restart the mission. In it, he guilt trips Nico and tells him that it was his idea to spare him and Roman. How's your cousin Roman after the incident the other day? Once he learns to control his bowels again, he will be good. Mikhail fucked up his guts pretty bad. At least he's alive, huh? Mikhail don't always go for the gut shots. I guess Roman's real lucky then. I wonder what big favor Faustin's gonna do for him next. You got to remember, you killed Vlad. That angered Mikhail no matter what he said. It was very difficult for me to persuade him that a man like you could be more useful to us alive than dead. You trying to tell me I owe you my life? No, I'm not. I was trying to tell you that I am a man who appreciates a good business venture when one comes along. Mikhail is making enemies very rapidly. A friend like you is useful. You are a man worth having on our side. Please to be of use. Dimitri is just repeating what Faustin said, but reversed it for himself. Faustin believed that Nico was capable and could work for them, and had to convince Dimitri to spare them. It was the other way around. Dimitri took Faustin's words and twisted it. He guilt-tripped Nico into thinking that Nico owed him his life to make him more loyal to him so he could easily manipulate him later on. Number six, we have manipulating Nico into killing his best friend and then betraying him. So as I stated before, Dimitri used Nico and manipulated him. He tricked Nico into thinking that he was his friend. What do you think? Mikael, Mr. Faustin. Uh-huh. You're given a choice. Kill your best friend or die. What do you do? And there is no way out? Not now. Not after you killed Petrovic's son. You don't have any family. You could run. Wherever you go, people will find you if they want to badly enough. And for this, they want blood. But you and Mikhail, you have so much history. Sure. Well, I killed the boy, so they want me too. No. I told them you were a hired gun. And they said, as long as you were the one to kill him, You'd be spared. <laughs> so that's the way it is. Yes, that's the way it is. He'll be leaving his house in a little while and heading for the club. Do what you have to do. You know, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that we must obey the rules of the game. 
We can pick the game, Nico Bellic. But we cannot change the rules. See you later. And we also never find out if all that stuff he said about Petrovich was actually true. My theory, as I stated like two years ago in my video on Dimitri's personality, I think that Dimitri probably lied to Petrovich and probably told him that this was, you know, all Faustin's doing, I had nothing to do with it, and that he probably said that one of the guys who died with Faustin was the hitman who killed Lenny. I highly doubt somebody like Petrovich would let that go. He just wanted to use Nico to get rid of Faustin. He even sends Nico a text message telling him that he is his friend. If you actually fail to kill Faustin, you get this non-canon phone call that shows how opportunistic Dimitri is. Dimitri, Mikhail got away from me. He is still alive. Bretz, does he know that I had anything to do with this? How could you be so stupid? Stay up the The first thing that Dimitri talks about with that call is if Faustin knew he had anything to do with it. Not asking if Nico is okay, then he calls him an idiot. It shows he was just using Nico and only cares about himself. After Nico kills Faustin, he sells him out to Bulgarin. Good. Yes. And I just wanted to check something with you. Okay. You are... Nico Bellic, correct? What is this? And you used to work the coast in the Mediterranean, smuggling people into Italy. I don't know what you're talking about. But you messed up. And left a lot of bad debt. You left a good friend of mine out of pocket. Big time. Hello, Nico. Hello, Mr. Bulgarin. Ross, where is our money? I don't know. I didn't rob you. Really? We were busted a mile off the coast. I had to swim for my life. I don't know what happened. I nearly drowned. Huh. My heart was bleeding. I did my best. I didn't fuck up. Oh, there you are. Oh. Ah! 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 Despite Nico surviving, Dimitri calls him a bottom feeder. Nico Bellic, we did not find your body with the others in the warehouse. Mr. Bulgarin and I were very disappointed. I was loyal to you, Dimitri. Why did you turn on me? You think I could survive in a cesspit of a city like this by aligning myself with a bottom feeder like you? You who had so many enemies. You robbed Bulgarin. You killed Mikhail. You know no more of loyalty than I do. You know why I killed Faustin. It was not my choice. I will find you, Nico. I have burnt you and your cousin out of Hove Beach. I will smoke you out of any other hiding place you have in this city. See you soon, Nico. This, I gotta say, is the second most shocking betrayal behind Big Smoke, and I, and I actually think this is actually way worse than Big Smoke, because Big Smoke was actually CJ's friend at one point, but the reason that he ultimately betrayed CJ is because CJ didn't want to go into the crack business with him. It hurt Big Smoke, but he ultimately wanted betrayed CJ because he wanted that crack money. If CJ agreed to go in the crack business with him, he would have never betrayed him. But on the other hand, Dimitri was never Nico's friend. He just manipulated him and tricked him. Dimitri acted like Nico's friend, pretended to be a reasonable man, when in reality he wasn't. He pretended to befriend Nico to get him to kill his best friend so he could take his criminal empire. And then when he didn't need Nico anymore, he sold him out to Bulgren. Just think about that. He pretended to be somebody's friend and then manipulated him into killing his best friend just so he could take his money. My god. Moving on to number five, we have betraying Nico again and getting so many people at the deal killed. This is one of the choices that you can have at the end of the game, and one of them is to go back into business with Dmitry Raskolov. But I need you to do something. I need you to collect that H. I got some Russians who have a buyer. Russians? Yeah. Dmitry Raskolov. Mo, we've got the history. I know, but this is real. I need you. Real? What the fuck is real? Real because it's you? Real because it's my last chance. Then good luck. No. I need you to get that H. I need the money. I looked out for you. You know, people wanted to whack you. I said no. Now I need you. 
and I'll pay a lot of money. Listen, Mr. Pegorino, I already told you. I got no, history. No, you listen, you dumb immigrant fuck. I ain't asking you. I'm telling you, do this. Get over your principles. These guys don't hold grudges. Do it or you and me are gonna have a problem. Look, Phil will look after you. You won't even have to deal with the fucking Russians. He's waiting for you, down in Tudor. All right. I knew I could count on you. Hey, how about that drink? Now, most people do not choose this option. However, we see Dimitri's intentions. If you choose to go down this path, Dimitri had the perfect opportunity to make it right here. Nico was willing to put his hatred for him behind in the name of business. Dimitri could have ended it right here. He could have ended all the violence, all the bloodshed. Everything would have gone back to business. But nope, what does he do instead? Nico Bellic, it's so good to be working with you again. I cannot say I have the same enthusiasm for this partnership. Have you given them the H? I want to get this money and go home. You know what? I thought, why should we hand over the H for this price? I thought it'd be easier if I just killed those guys and kept it. Easier for who? What the fuck are you doing? Me and Phil are in their compound. What's going to happen when they find out? If I was you, I'd go and get the money off them. It has to be on the site. That way we all win. Good luck, Nico. Fucking Dimitri. He's killed the guys collecting the stuff. Shit, we're screwed. They ain't gonna let us leave. All right, if we're fighting, we're fighting for the money. We got to jump on them right now. Follow me. Dimitri killed the guys collecting the heroin. Him and Pegorino were supposed to be business partners in the deal, but Dimitri most likely asked for Nico to be there so he could set him up. Phil and Nico at that point had no choice but to open fire. Their lives were threatened, they nearly got killed, because the buyers would kill them anyways if they tried to reason with them. This led to a massive shootout with dozens and dozens of people dying. And then Phil and Nico had to chase down the cash, and they barely got out with their lives. We got it! Thank fucking God. That certainly wasn't simple. Fucking Dimitri, I ain't never been put in a situation like that before. I guess you get used to it when you hang around with him long enough. If they'd gotten tipped off before Dimitri called us, we would have been fucked. It would have been an execution. Dimitri likes to set up executions. He set up his best friend, Mikhail Faustin. You gonna kill him then? No, it's over for me. I'm out. If I was going to kill him, I would have done that instead of this deal. Now I got the money and I'm going to forget all about this shit. Good luck to you, man. I hope it works out. Next at number 4, we have Kidnapping Roman. Dimitri was obsessed with killing Nico so much to the point that he didn't care about kidnapping Roman, who was an innocent man and had no ties to Dimitri, just so he could get to Nico. But it gets worse, because Dimitri not only kidnapped Roman and had him tortured, but he forced Johnny to do it, threatening to kill his ex-girlfriend. You hear? You hear, old man Johnny? What's the matter, sugar? Oh, Johnny! I fucked up. I fucked up real bad. What'd you do? I messed up, baby. Promise you won't be mad. Why? What'd you do? I'm an addict. I need help. What the fuck did you do? How did you I... must be Johnny. Who are you? My name is not important. What is this? Your woman here owes Dmitry Raskolov a lot of money. Okay. I... We need you to do us favor. What? We need you to kidnap someone for us. Well, I'm not in the kidnapping business, dude. And I'm not in the dude business, dude. You either do it or Junkie gets killed. Not difficult decision, even for a man stuck in 1960s time warp. <laughs> it's easy. You grab him and deliver him to warehouse of Lampak in Bohan Industrial. And this will pay off her debts? Well, <laughs> it pays off interest. Wonderful. The name of the man we want is Roman Balik. Yeah. He runs a cab business, but hangs around some backroom gambling place on uh, Dillon Street in Shotland. Dillon Street it. again. You find him. You take him. Now, run along. Ashley, you gotta stop fucking things up. Fuck. 
Ashley Butler was a meth addict who had borrowed money from Dimitri for drugs, and Dimitri, just like in other instances, cannot do it himself, but forces someone else to do it for him. He forced Johnny to kidnap Roman, or he will kill Ashley, and his guys don't even promise to wipe the debt completely once he does it. He just says, oh, we'll just take care of interest for you. So he still has his ex-girlfriend in debt despite forcing him to do it. Hello. Hey, old man, how you doing? <laughs> Please, gentlemen. The men in there just took my money. I can't get robbed twice in one day. What do you want, the shirt off my back? Come on! We're not robbing you, we're taking you. Oh, no. <laughs> Chips have been cashed, Chubby. <laughs> no! Wait! Get in there! Somebody! Shut stop. up! Shut Somebody your help. fat ass up! Somebody looking for a fat Slav with a bladder problem? So... This is Roman Bellic? <laughs> Not such a tough guy, eh? What is all this fuss about his cousin? Listen, buddy. Ashley's square with you now. So do me a favor. Go easy on the fat man. I've seen some of the bodies you people drop in the humble. Easy, Johnny. You saw the shit stains in the back seat. He's scared enough. What happens to this shithead is none of your concern. You come with me. Shit, Johnny. Yo, I gotta bounce. Be easy, man. A panicked Mallory calls Nico, telling him that she heard that Roman has been taken to a warehouse in Bohan. As Nico is actually making his way there, ne Dimitri sends him a text message showing him a picture of Roman being tortured and has the nerve to type at the end, your friend Dimitri. Nico can actually call him in a secret call right after this. You've crossed the line, Dimitri. I got your message, Dimitri, you piece of shit. You're a dead man. A dead man. Before you die, I'm going to cut your face off. Then I'm going to hang it on my wall to remind me what a lying, cheating, treacherous scumbag looks like. Goodbye, friend. Nico then finds Roman, fights his way through the warehouse where Dimitri's man tries to take Roman as a human shield. Nico, please help me! We are Nico Bellic. Turn around and walk away or your cousin is dead. I am not afraid of death. When she comes for me, I shall embrace her. I... Thank you, cousin. You saved my life. We should get out of here. A few hours after Nico saves Roman, Dimitri calls him and brags about how he would have enjoyed torturing Roman. Nico, it's Dimitri. I have nothing to say to you. I nearly ran into your cousin the other day. My friends were uh, hanging out with him. The party got busted up though before I got there. I wish you had been there. We could have had some fun. Not as much fun as I would have had with Roman, believe me. Roman was an innocent victim in this, but Dimitri doesn't care about hurting innocent people, and he's sadistic, in that he would have enjoyed torturing someone. Number three, we have using his best friend and betraying him. I covered this a little bit when I talked about Dimitri betraying Nico, but let's focus on just Faustin here. The reason this is one of the most evil things he did is because he grew up with Faustin. He knew Faustin for decades, but Faustin was never his true friend. Faustin was someone he manipulated and pretended to be friends with. He used Faustin for decades, and we can see how manipulative he is and how he befriended Nico and tricked him into killing Faustin. Dimitri did this primarily to take Faustin's criminal empire. Dimitri never had the brains or the muscle to build a criminal empire. Faustin did. That's why he let him build it up and then killed him when he didn't need him anymore. Dimitri also used Faustin when they were in prison to protect him. Faustin even mentions that Dimitri would have died in prison if not for him. You think Dimitri would have survived prison without me? He'd just be some prison queen. Had I not been there, meet for some gin monkey. 
But why the betrayal now, all of a sudden? Faustin had built up a big enough empire, and him killing Petrovic's son, which Dmitri manipulated him to doing again, was a perfect excuse to get rid of him. The reason Dmitri had Nico kill Faustin and not send another hitman is because everyone else knew the type of person Dmitri was, and every hitman knew that he'd be killed after. Nico was new and was easily manipulated by Dmitri. Faustin actually was aware of the type of person Dim Dmitri was, and that's why he says, don't think I can't see right through you. How do we? Strange. When I give out the money, it's us. When I have to push people, it's me. All alone. Don't think I cannot see through you. After all we've done together. You're getting delusional. Look, we have to go. I fucking love you. Yes, yes. I fucking love you. I know. Yes. Yeah. But you treat me like a child. I run things my way. Dimitri Raskolov, my fucking way! Faustin's biggest problem was that despite knowing how treasonous and scummy Dimitri was, he never expected him to betray him. He thought he was his friend. And there's another key detail here. When I made my video two years ago on him, Faustin mentions his tattoo, which shows, shows that they are brothers. But there is something that I missed in that you guys have pointed out. That is what Dimitri wanted when you killed Vlad. Dimitri. My brother. You see this? This statue says we are brothers for life. And now he betrays me. You guys told me that Dimitri doesn't have the same tattoo, and that's proof right there that their friendship means nothing to them. I never noticed that in my video two years ago, but you guys were right. Thaustin has the tattoo, which signifies them being brothers, but Dimitri doesn't. I checked both of his hands. He doesn't have it. And I don't think this, this is a detail that Rockstar missed. I think this is on purpose. It shows that their friendship is only one-sided. And Dimitri almost lets it slip that he doesn't care. In Master in the Molotov, when Nico says, but you guys have so much history, you're best friends, Dimitri says just a simple, sure. You don't have any family. You could run. Wherever you go, people will find you if they want to badly enough. And for this, they want blood. But you and Mikhail, you have so much history. Sure. Sure, that's it. Even if it was the case that he has to kill his best friend and he has no choice, most people would be tearing, tearing up over it. They'd be extremely upset having to kill their best friend. Big Smoke betrayed Sweet, but was really upset over it calling Tenpenny into, in the introduction. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about your principles. I don't give a fuck about your friends. People who step in my way get fucked. Now you got paid. You took the money. I'm trying to set you up for life here, boy, and you're inadequate. You no use to me at all, boy. Maybe I should kill you instead. Eddie, organize a hit squad. Not a problem. <laughs> you hear that? You feeling me here? You about to wake up with your head 50 feet away from your body, son. Do what we agree. Oh, you think you can put one over on me? Do you? I don't think so. So do it. This week. Dimitri, on the other hand, shows no emotion. Imagine that manipulating somebody for decades into thinking you were their best friend, then betraying them and not caring at all. What a disgusting human being. Dimitri turned on me. Turn the other way around. America made him greedy. Dimitri will turn on you as well. You shall discover this. I have a little conviction. I have only done what I believe. None of you will survive in this country without me. This American greed takes everyone. It's like a disease. Only I am still sane. Betrayed! Betrayed by Dimitri and by you! Too kind! That's what I was! Too kind! I led the snakes into the nest and they destroyed everything! I gave them everything and they took everything from me! Now they've sent you to take the only thing I have left! You have got me cornered. There is nowhere for me to go. You betrayed yourself, Mr. Faustin. Ah! 
At number 2, we have killing Roman on his wedding day. This is in the deal ending. Nico survived Dimitri's setup and was willing to let things go, but Dimitri on the other hand wasn't. Dimitri still wanted Nico dead, and he sent a hitman to Roman's wedding. His wedding! Yo, 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 Nico, 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 calm down, calm down, man, yo, easy, easy. He told me to leave it. I left it. Nico, Nico, get up, man, get up, man, get up. Oh, man. Gotta get you out of here, man, police and so far. Don't worry, man, me find the meeting, me call you. Leave. Okay. The reason this hitman said a gift from Dmitry Raskolov was because this is what Dmitry wanted Nico to hear before he died. While Roman might not have been Dmitry's initial target, the hitman probably would not have stopped there, and he sent him to a wedding knowing very well what could have happened. What kind of evil human being sends a hitman to a wedding in front of a church, the happiest day of somebody's life? Not even some mafias would kill somebody at a wedding. I remember how shocked I was the first time I saw that cutscene. The deal ending was the first ending I ever did. He shows no empathy whatsoever. This taught me a valuable lesson, which is to never trust a snake again. Before I reveal the number one most evil thing that Dimitri did, I wanted to make a few special mentions. Special mention number one is burning down Roman's business and home. Sir, let me out! Shit, man. What are you doing in there? I got scared. People started calling the house and hanging up. You weren't answering your phone, what happened? We've got a big problem. Dimitri was not a man of his word. So we're dead? More or less. What the fuck? Holy fuck, it's fucking burning! The whole place! I've got to go on? in! I've got to get something! Leave it, cousin. This place is gone. They burnt it! They fucking burnt it, Nico! It took me to get the place of my own. You got off the boat and I was here for you. I know you were. I got here and I had nothing. Nobody. I worked my way up from the fucking dirt. Jesus, it's on fire. Oh, Fuck. I've got nothing left. Not my home, not my business, nothing. I took it all. I'm sorry, Roman. I'm really sorry, but we have to go. Special mention number two is trying to have Bobby Jefferson killed. Driver, why is this road closed? Is there a problem? Another roadblock? This definitely wasn't mentioned on the traffic report. I'm gonna go and move the barriers. Come on, Mr. Jefferson! Let's get out of here! If I get out of this, punks like me three rascal off are going to wish they never got off the boat here. Special mention number three is using grocery store change as a front for smuggling cocaine into Alderney. Special mention number four is flooding Liberty City with heroin.
Запакуйте весь хэроин. Мы сегодня ночью посылаем. Special mention number five is betraying Pegarino. What's the problem? Me and you's partners now. We're back on top. I didn't work this hard to share the spoils of a victory. Goodbye. So you see that? Dimitri betrayed Pegarino, just like Dimitri, he betrays everyone. You and me is gonna end this. You're a piece of back and shit! And number one, the number one worst and most evil thing Dimitri did was stealing Ileana Faustin's money and abandoning her and her daughter. Nico, how are you? Mrs. Faustin, it's nice to see you. I'm okay. You know, it's difficult. Yes, very difficult. I was, uh... Sorry to hear about your husband. Were you? Maybe, unlike that treacherous rat Dimitri. He and I are not Try friends. My husband was not perfect. Far from it. He was awful. A murdering, drug-addicted bully. In many ways, the world is better off without him. But now I am alone. I'm uh, sorry about that. And my daughter grows up without a father. She's learning a bitter lesson very early. Yes, she's bad. And now the money is gone, the house got repossessed, and we are living in a one-room apartment. The land of opportunity. <laughs> I'd rather be back in Russia. At least there, people don't pretend life has any pleasure. Do you need money? I need more than that. I need someone to come and get the man to leave my daughter alone. I can see he is a slime ball. I think he's trying to turn her into a stripper or even worse. What guy? Some slime ball hangs out mouth. on Dillon Street in Shuttler. I can't do much for you. But I will get this slime ball to leave your daughter alone. Nico, thank you. But please, no more killing. Now, a lot of people are probably very surprised I chose this as number one. Most people probably were thinking I would choose Roman's death as the worst one, but from Nico's perspective, that was the worst thing he did. But from Dimitri's side, this is the worst, most evil thing he did in the game. It wasn't enough to kill and betray his best friend, but he had to rob his best friend's wife of her husband's money. Ileana had a tough time. She loved Faustin at one point, but Dimitri turned him into a cold, abusive psycho. So Dimitri was the main reason that Faustin changed. He became this violent, abusive, drug addict that would just hurt his wife constantly. So she was suffering because of that. She watched the man that she loved turn into this horrible human being that constantly abused her. So she was constantly tormented by Faustin because of Dimitri's change of him, but still she loved him despite all of that. Even if everything Dimitri said to Nico was 100% true, that he had to kill Faustin for Petrovic, he still owed it to his best friend to take care of his wife and daughter, let them keep the house, give them some money so they can still live a comfortable life, but no, he doesn't. Ileana mentions how much of a disgusting person Dimitri was for not caring that Faustin died, and then robbing her and her daughter. They lost the house after they couldn't afford it, and the club after D Dimitri stole it. You ever wonder how someone can still hurt someone even after they are dead? It's exactly what Dimitri did. He's so evil, he can still hurt someone even after they die. Betraying and killing Faustin wasn't enough for him. He's so evil, he can still hurt someone even after they died. Betraying and killing Faustin wasn't enough for him. He was going to rob his best friend's wife of his fortune and make them homeless, and he probably enjoyed doing it. Despite how cruel Faustin can be, he does love his daughter in a twisted way, which is why he actually has Nico take care of that biker she's hanging out with. I'm sorry to hear that. Let me ask you something. You know her? No. Good. Because if you did, I'd fucking kill you. Why? She's my daughter. Ungrateful bitch. I bring her here. I spoil her rotten. Raise her well. Look at this. Look. Look what I've given her! Yeah, yeah. She's uh, very lucky to have such a loving father. She is. She's an out of control bitch. Because of you, <laughs> you pathetic mess. <laughs> but I don't accept my daughter turning into a whore. Nico, she's at Firefly Island. Go there. If she's meeting up with that bike pimp boyfriend, get him. 
Find Dimitri for me. Okay. Have him call me. Sure. Go. All right. Hey, this a bitch. I've killed the biker. I don't know how happy your daughter will be. I don't care about her happiness. I care about discipline and loyalty. Thank you, Nico. This would have broken Faustin's heart and drove him mad if he was still alive. His daughter was being turned into a prostitute by some pimp, but Nico saves her, and Ileana does at least have some closure. Hey, slime ball. Why does every Russian in the city call me that? What do you want, shit face? Up, I want you to stay away from Anna Faustin forever. Yeah? And I want a blowjob every morning for the rest of my life. But we don't all get what we want. In this case, I am I going to get what I want. <gasps> okay, okay, I'm persuaded. I won't see the bitch again. You ever see Anna again? You're gonna be breathing through a tube for the rest of your life, slime ball! Hello? Nico, it's Ileana. My daughter is upstairs in tears. I am sorry. Do not be. The sleaze ball has broken up with her. I owe you thanks. Anna is safe for now. I know the things must be hard, but you are strong enough for the both of you. In a poll I did a couple days ago, I asked you guys which character you associated with pure evil the most. And I put on the most evil characters that I could think of in GTA. Claude, Catalina, Tenpenny, and Dimitri. And Dimitri overwhelmingly destroyed all of them. Even combined, he destroyed all of them. That's how evil this guy is. I don't know a more evil character in the GTA universe than Dimitri. I agree with you guys 100% on that. And that concludes this video. Thank you guys for watching this lore video. If you enjoyed it, do drop a like and subscribe. Dimitri is the most evil GTA character of all time. It's, I have not never seen a more manipulative character in the GTA series than him, and a more sadistic and psychopathic character than him. Somebody who basically tries to pretend to be your friend, tricks you into killing his best friend for power, abandons his best friend's wife and daughter on the streets, and then sends a hitman to Nico's um, a cousin's wedding to kill him. It is the list just goes on and on with this guy. There's no empathy in this guy. It's like there's no soul in him it's, it's like he has no heart whatsoever so that pretty much wraps up this video thank you guys for watching but before we leave off here i wanted to give another shout out to war thunder thank you guys for sponsoring this lore video i do greatly appreciate it it means a lot to me use my link down below check it out it's an awesome free to play war game with so many vehicles so many different tanks helicopters planes and ships and if you're new to War Thunder or haven't played in 6 months and you use my link in the description of the top pinned comment, you will get 100,000 Silver Lions, an M284 light tank, a uh, Gallers F32 aircraft, and a 58 FTPT3 torpedo boat, 50% XP booster, 7 days of a premium account, an M4 tank for rent, P40E1 plane for rent, an Eagle of Valor decoration and 10 backups for each rented ground vehicle. Uh, check out Warfinder. It is free to play on the Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.